Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Prayer. Of course, all these things have coronavirus links and stuff on them now, all these websites. Uh, everybody's, this is a worldwide thing. Everybody's really on fire for this and everybody's really uh, caught up in this. <clears throat> so if you got a chance to watch headlines today, you saw some pretty interesting stuff in there. I actually had several people comment that have never commented before. Guys, the Holy Spirit is talking to people. People are telling me about things that the Lord has been leading them to. And I know a lot of your comments I haven't responded to. Sometimes I'm, I'm going through them because it, the, the white screen is killing my eyes. I haven't been able to find any way to really help it. Um, but I'm reading every comment. Uh, that's that's two. That's one thing I do twice a day at least is, is read through comments if I can. Then again, YouTube's been having issues with comments. But um, people are telling me about stuff they're being led to. And they're like, I never saw this before. And all of a sudden they're led to it. They're talking about other people's videos and even my videos that lead them to that, inspire them to go into this thing. And all of a sudden, there it is, a click. And they're like, hey, I caught this. I'm seeing people confessing these aha moments. Aha, I found something. And it's just waking up to them. And I love it. I love it. I love it because this is him showing his authority and his power and showing his grace and mercy in us. He's pouring out his spirit. David Benjamin did two great videos today talking about this. Uh, the one in Colossians was really good. And guys, we're seeing something happen here because there were people last year that were on board for this, this, and this date, and there were other people that weren't on board, and it was going back and forth, and it's like everybody I talk to, everybody I watch, are all seeing the same thing. This is it, guys. Tomorrow night we have a super pink moon. The biggest moon of the year. I don't know if I'll get to watch it because it'll be cloudy, but so much is lining up. And, you know, we got stuff going on. We prayed for Sister Lisa today. You know, she may have COVID. Um, we've had a lot of issues with that. My brother has just fought it. Looks like he's still got it. Uh, he's still struggling with some problems. Um, some other people have popped up with it. Got some other issues that have come up that I'm not going to mention on here. But it was kind of bad. It's showing how people are taking advantage of situations. And it's disturbing, but you know what? It's a sign of the times. Here's the thing. In all of that stuff, and stuff we haven't even mentioned, we let the peace of God reign. And that's what these scriptures I have. I have 30 scriptures about the peace of Christ, the peace of God. We let that reign in our hearts. Live your life profess the kingdom if people are mocking you mark Dicato, he's confessed to me a couple times he's been getting mocked like crazy in his personal life i was like dude keep preaching if they don't like it tough keep preaching all of you that are struggling with that you got family members that are about be bold in the word be bold in the gospel when they step up and start giving you lip you get aggressive step right back at them make that hard eye contact and tell them do you really want to take the chance that I'm right and you're wrong? And then turn around before they can respond. Turn around and walk away. Leave them thinking about that. Be bold with the gospel. Stand and contend. The way the world is now, it's that's the natural reaction is to shrink away. Don't do that. Somebody starts to give you, you're at a barbecue, a bunch of people there, and they're all starting to mock you. When, you'll know, the Spirit will tell you when it gets to the point when you need to respond and the Spirit will give you the words just like He does in these prayers. And you'll stand there and you'll tell everybody, I'm telling every single one of you, if you have not done this business with the Lord Jesus Christ, you better do it today because tomorrow you might regret it. If that offends you, good. If that catches you wrong in the heart and convicts you, good. It should. Because while we're all standing here having fun and enjoying each other's company, Sinister schemes are happening behind the scenes that we don't know about. That the world in general doesn't know about. And then you tell them, and you point to every one of them and tell them, every single one of you, know deep down inside what's going to happen. You can change your fate right now by one simple decision, and that's to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You're not going to make a lot of friends doing this. But if you save one person, if you lead one person to Christ for salvation, it is worth it. 
And from all that, the peace of God, the peace that's, that defies all understanding, comes to us. Because we know that no matter what, God is sovereign. Christ is our Lord and our Savior. And just like David Benjamin mentioned when he was doing this video on Colossians, he is setting us up. I've mentioned it too. He's setting us up for a triumphal entry into heaven. He is providing us what we need. He has justified us. He has sanctified us. It's not about the sins that, sins that we do. It's not about the mistakes that we make. It's about the faith that we have. It's about the fact that we believe he is the Son of God. We believe he is the Messiah. That's what it's based on. You can be sinless perfection and never make it into heaven. All these people that are trying to do this have got it completely backwards. It's not about being sinless. It's about being faithful. It's about understanding that it is all about Christ, not you. Because Christ did it all. And they miss the mark because they're trying to justify their own flesh. Not realizing that the Bible says their flesh does not inherit heaven. So you're wasting your time and energy trying to justify something that will be burned up in the fire that will consume this world. It is your faith that he's looking for. It is your trust that he is looking for. And it is your love that he is looking for. If you don't have those three things, if you're not hoping for the coming of Christ, hoping for the rescue, rapture, the rescue of the church, you've got business to do. Let's go to get into some prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you this beautiful, quiet evening. You've made it so quiet, so peaceful out here. It is amazing. You've brought us together in conversation in our own homes with our families. You've given us opportunities to evangelize and to preach to those who need the gospel. Many of us are struggling with our families, with our friends. We're watching people openly deny. That's okay. And I want every brother and sister that is watching this and that isn't watching us to realize it's okay if they don't accept it now. They will later. When the rapture happens, there will be no doubt of what's going on. And we see all the signs that's about to happen. Like, amazingly close to about to happen. There are people that I talk to now, that I've talked to in the last couple of weeks, that said, I think it's further along than this, I don't think it's happening now, that in the last week have changed their view. They're now starting to see, you know what, I think it is actually about to happen. Now, these are people I've talked to since last year, and they're like, I don't know. I, th I think you're jumping the gun here. I don't think it's going to be for a little bit yet. 2021, 2022, they've all, in this last week, have all changed their tune. They're like, guys, something's about to happen. It's clear something is about to happen because what's happening right now is unprecedented. Lord, you have opened the word up to us so vibrantly and so clearly. You have brought understanding out into the open and laid it out on the ground for everyone to see. I remember whenever you were, those people were trying to stone that woman and you were writing with your finger in the dirt. I now know what you were writing. You weren't writing the Ten Commandments. You weren't writing the, you were giving the full understanding of the truth and you were writing it out right there on the ground in front of them when they read it. It convicted them. It cut them deep. And they had nothing to say and they walked away. You never had to say a word. The very earth you were standing on and drawing in convicted them. And what did you tell that woman, Lord? Where are your accusers? She said, there's no one here but you and me. Well, if they don't accuse you, I don't accuse you either. Go forth and sin no more. And that woman became a believer. Lord, you are doing that to all of us. You are convicting the whole world. And there are the, the people that are coming together in prayer, hospital roofs and parking lots covered with personnel praying together. When have we ever seen this kind of revival? It's astounding. And you're pouring it out on all of the true believers, all those who, who have been called. What is this world going to do when we're gone? I know exactly what it's going to do. It's going to suffer. But thanks be to you and to our Holy Father in Heaven that you're still going to make a way for people to get saved after we're gone. 
they're still going to have the ability to get saved and to stand before you in heaven. The Bible tells us this. Revelation chapter 7. It's amazing to see the word coming to life like it never has before. Unprecedented activity going on in the world. We have never seen this ever in the history of mankind. Seen this much prophecy active. How can anyone not see what's coming? Yet we have people denying your power. Lord, have mercy on them for they know not what they do. But they're going to find out pretty soon. I offer no condemnation for anybody. I do offer conviction because hearts need to be convicted to realize what the truth is. And Lord, you are pouring that truth out in bucket loads on everybody. And it's so awesome to see the brothers and sisters drawing together in solidarity and in love, in prayer for each other. We prayed for Sister Lisa Boyce. She's, she's okay. She may have COVID-19, but she's okay. Lord, we know, we know she's in the palm of your hand. And all the other brothers and sisters, Edward, Brother Edward Driver, he, he thanked me today. Thank you for your prayers last night and evening prayer. You, when I woke up in the morning, I was in significantly less pain. Lord, you eased his pain exactly what we asked you to do. And so many others with praise reports. Lord, I don't have any names to lift up per se, but I'd like to lift up my sister Terry from my church. Her and her husband have started a business, and it's an outreach to those who have been released from incarceration. They're trying to help them integrate back into the thing. Lord, bless that ministry as long as it's there, as long as we're here. I believe she is a true sister, and she believes. You know her heart, I don't. But me and her have had a lot of conversations, and I hope she's watching, because, Lord, I hope you bless her, and I hope you bless her family. And I hope you unfold the truth before her. Because of all the people, she's the only one I've been able to stay in direct contact with. And Lord, I pray this blessing on every brother and sister. Lord, I have scriptures I like to pray. First, I'd like to start in Colossians 3.15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace. And be thankful. Galatians 5.22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. That scripture actually goes a lot longer than that. Hebrews 12.14, make every effort to live in peace with everybody and to be holy without holiness. No one will see the Lord. How are we holy? By living in faith. 1 Peter 3.11, they must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. First Peter 5, 7, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Of all these scriptures, that's the most important. First Thessalonians 5, 15, make sure that nobody pays back wrong for, for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. That's the believer and the non-believer. James 3.18, peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. God is setting us up for this. Philippians 4.7, the peace of God. This is... Uh-oh. This is an extremely good scripture. Philippians 4.7, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds. In Christ Jesus. Proverbs 12.20 Deceit is in the hearts of those who plot evil, but those who promote peace have joy. Strive for peace. Proverbs 16.7 When the Lord takes pleasure in anyone's way, he causes their enemies to make peace with them. Listen to what this says. I'm going to repeat this one. This is for all my brothers and sisters. Lord, put this in their hearts. Proverbs 16.7 When the Lord takes pleasure in anyone's way, he causes their enemies to make peace with them. Psalm 29, 11, the Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Romans 12, 18, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Notice in this statement, brothers and sisters, that as much as you can live peace with them, you can't live in peace with everyone. 
Romans 14, 19, let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Psalm 34, 14, turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. If you pursue it, you will find it. Matthew 10, 34, 36, do not suppose that I have come to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be members of his own household. Lord, I hope the brothers and sisters that are struggling with this particular issue understand what this scripture means. It's not that you meant for them to be at odds with them. It's that you meant to draw them out from them as somebody selected and predestined and perfected before you. That they understand that this is for a purpose, not meant to cause issues. But I hope, Lord, that they'll keep planting seeds in lieu of this. 1 Peter 3, 9-11 through 11, Do not repay evil for evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing. Because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. Psalm 37, 7, consider the blameless, observe the upright, a future awaits those who seek peace. Psalm 85, 8, I will listen to what God the Lord says. He promises peace to his people, his faithful servants, but let them not turn to folly. Romans 12, 17 through 21. Did we just do Romans? Okay, let's go to verse 19. We did just two Romans. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The phrase is, kill him with kindness. Psalm 119, 165, great peace have those who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. Isaiah 9, 6, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah 26, 3, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Isaiah 26, 12, Lord, you establish peace for us. All that we have accomplished, you have done for us. Lord, I want to repeat this one so the brothers and sisters hear it again. Isaiah 26, 12, Lord, you establish peace for us. All that we have accomplished, you have done for us. Not us, you. This is all about you. Isaiah 54.10, though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. God is witnessing what we're going through and having mercy on us because of it. Your trials and tribulations are not going unnoticed. Isaiah 55, 12, you will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the fields will clap their hands. James 2, great, great chapter in the Bible. A lot of contention with this chapter. James 2, 14 through 24, what good is it? My brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds, can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and, and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? You've done nothing for them by blessing them. In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without your deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac to the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together 
and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do, and not by faith alone. And Lord, please help everybody understand. I've done this chapter already. Help everybody understand. Because the key words here are in verse 23. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God. That means he trusted that our Holy Father would stop him or resurrect Isaac when he offered him up. He trusted God. And that's what this is about, that trust, which fosters peace. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light, and it indeed is, because all you need to do is exactly what Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 says. It is a gift of grace from God. All we have to do is believe. John 16, 33, I have told you these things, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Lord, people misunderstand the peace that you're referring to. John 14, 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Romans 14, 17 through 19, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness. Let me rephrase. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of flesh, but of spirit peace and joy in the Holy Spirit because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification Lord that was such a perfect scripture to end this prayer with Romans 14 17 through 19 let me say it again for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking. It's not a matter of flesh. But of righteousness. It's of peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God. And receives human approval. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace. And to mutual edification. Amen, Lord. Great set of scriptures. Lord, I pray these scriptures get into the hearts of those that hear it. I pray that they'll inspire them to go read more into these scriptures. To go pay more attention and to do more studies and to learn more about you. There's no time left. We're at the end. The end of this age and this dispensation. Everything is about to change. Lord, I pray they get it. I pray that it's in the hearts of the unbelievers and they change. I pray those that need repentance, repent and turn to you so that the cheering will be heard on the earth from heaven because so many sinners turn to you may every heart glorify you may every voice praise you may and may everyone who believes love you and may that love reach heaven and surround your throne and sing a song that all the angels hear maybe they won't understand but they hear it and they know, look at these people who love him, who are looking for him. What an amazing thing that even the angels will be impressed. Look at these people who are waiting for him, who love him, who care for him. And then we get there and we all get to talk and fellowship together. Lord, such an amazing thing is about to befall this earth and to befall the church, your people. Redeem your people. Call them up. We're ready. Do not tarry, Lord. The body says, come. The church says, come. The bride says, come, Lord. Come quickly. We love you, and we're ready to stand with you for all eternity. It is in your mighty, beloved name that we pray all these things. And I pray blessings of peace upon all my brothers and sisters. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for evening prayer. Please go study these scriptures deeper. Learn more about our Lord. Share this with everyone that you think needs it. 
The Holy Spirit will talk to you on this. Guys, it's almost over. Stand strong. Stand true. No matter what happens, stand strong and stand true. And until the Lord comes to take us or until man shuts me up, I will continue to do these videos because they are so Holy Spirit led. It is unbelievable. If you knew some of the circumstances behind the beginnings of these videos and where they end up, it is amazing. The power of the Holy Spirit working, not in me, but through me. And prayers are being answered. I start with no words. I end with all words. And they're not even my words. They're from the Lord. And it's amazing. And I love it. And I love that I'm a vessel. I hope for honor that he is using me for. And I hope to see you all in heaven very soon. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name. Have a beautiful evening. And I will see you in the next video.